Welcome to another informative episode of the AWS Cloud Practitioner Exam Question Series on Exam Incentive Channel. Please like, share, and subscribe to get regular updates on new episode releases. Let's get started. Episode 20, I'll be covering question number 111 and 115 in this episode. For questions 1 to 110, please refer to episode 1 to 19 of this series. Let's get started. Which of the following are advantages of moving to AWS Cloud? We had the documentation around uh, six advantages of cloud, and this question is based on that uh, piece of documentation. Let's go each option uh, one by one and see which one is correct, which one is not. So first one, the ability to turn over the responsibility for all security to AWS. No, it's not correct. It's a shared responsibility. Security of the cloud is responsibility of AWS, but security in the cloud configuration, who has the access, what roles you have, what database access you have, application access, all of that is responsibility of customer. So this one is incorrect. The next one, the ability to use pay-as-go model. This is the correct advantage of a cloud application. You don't have to build infrastructure. You don't have to invest upfront because you are getting a ready-made infrastructure. Effectively, you are leasing it or renting it, and then you'll be paying it on a pay-as-go basis based on what services you have used. So you'll be paying in OPEX mode as opposed to CAPEX mode. So this is a correct answer. Let's move on to the next one. Option C, the ability to have full control over the physical infrastructure, absolutely incorrect. Customers do not have control over physical infrastructure. They don't even know where the infrastructure is in most cases. Um, it's AWS responsibility to maintain and manage infrastructure and provide security of the physical infrastructure. So this is an incorrect option. Option D, no longer having to guess what capacity will be required. Yes, this is correct. This is coming from scalability aspect of uh, cloud where you don't have to over-provision or under-provision. You don't have to worry about what capacity you, would, you will be needing for the load. If you have fluctuating demand, you can you know configure auto-scaling of services depending on what services are using. And as long as you have done the configuration right, based on the demand and the load that you will get or a customer request you will get, the services and or the resources that you are using, you will be able to scale up or down depending on the requirement. So this is definitely an advantage of moving to cloud. So this is correct. So we got our two answers. And the last one, no longer worrying about user access controls. No, definitely no. Customers have to configure the controls. Security in the cloud is the responsibility for a customer. So this is an incorrect uh, answer. So option B and option D is the correct answer for this particular question. Let's move to the next question. Question number 112, which AWS service is a hybrid cloud storage service that provides on-premises users access to virtually unlimited cloud storage? Let's go through the option, AWS Data Sync. So this is incorrect. AWS Data Sync is used for migration of data between on-premises and cloud storage. So it is linked to on-prem and cloud storage, but not for unlimited storage. It is only used at the time of migration. So this is incorrect. Second option B, AWS Glacier. Glacier is a long-term cost-effective defreezing solution where you don't need to access data frequently. And that is not a on-prem to cloud storage solution. So this is within cloud itself. So that's incorrect. Option D, uh, Amazon Elastic Block Store. Now this offers block level storage for EC2 instances, but doesn't directly connect on-premises users to cloud storage. So this is an incorrect option. And that leaves us with option C, AWS Storage Gateway. It is a hybrid cloud storage service, and it provides on-premise users access to virtually unlimited cloud storage. So this is the answer for this particular question. We have done this service in past, but let's revise again. Here are the key highlights of AWS Storage Gateway. It's a hybrid storage functionality, virtually unlimited storage because it uses Amazon S3 as its backend storage, which is virtually unlimited. Uh, you have multiple storage options like file gateway, state gateway, and volume gateway. It provides seamless integration between on-prem application and AWS services and provides scalable storage infrastructure. That's it on this question. Question number 113, a company plans to migrate AWS and wants to create cost estimates for its AWS use cases. Which AWS service or tool can the company use to meet these requirements? So we want to do the cost estimation. What does this mean is you want to migrate to AWS services. You are currently not on AWS infrastructure or at least the resources you want to estimate for, they are not in AWS infrastructure. So you want an estimate. So we, we are looking at estimation tool. With that in mind, let's analyze the options. So first one, AWS pricing calculator. Yes, this is the service that's needed for estimating the cost. You can use AWS pricing calculator, choose your services, and then it will tell you what it would cost you to move the services to AWS, how much it would cost you on monthly, annual basis, et cetera, et cetera. Let's look at other options, why they were wrong. 
uh, option B, CloudWatch. CloudWatch is used for creating alarms. It's nothing to do with cost estimation. So if I was doing elimination technique, I would basically get rid of this first. Cost Explorer, this could be used for estimation. No, it is used once you are already on the cloud. So when you are on cloud, you could, you know, get Cost Explorer can be used to create certain reports, analyze, you know, detailed reports where uh, you can examine the cost, why, where you are spending more, where you are spending less, where you need to optimize. And based on that, you can fine tune your infrastructure. But this is once you are on the cloud. This cannot tell you before you are moving to cloud how much estimate you are going to have. So this is incorrect. And the last one, AWS budgets. Budgets is used to define thresholds and control your usage. Again, this one is once you are on the cloud and the purpose of this is not to estimate. You can decide budget for your account and then when and you can do multiple uh, you know, thresholds and you can have advanced warning, etc. So when you reach certain thresholds, you can get alarms and then that could let your administrator know that you have to take some action. So AWS budget is again, once you are already on cloud to control the service usage, not for estimation. So answer for this question is option A. Let's move to the next question. Question number 114, which tool should a developer use to integrate AWS service feature directly into an application? Let's go over uh, the options. Let's do elimination. First one, AWS code deploy. Absolutely wrong. This is a deployment tool. It's not uh, AWS service feature that can integrate uh, from a development perspective uh, into an application. So this is gone. It's not a development tool, but a deployment tool. AWS Lambda, it's a serverless compute. You all know it cannot be used for um, providing a developer access into application. So that's wrong. And AWS Batch is also wrong. It's a batch processing tool. Uh, if you want to do a certain jobs um, uh, repetitively in a batch format, you can use this. And what you we have left with is option A. Yes, uh, AWS SDK is what is needed uh, to integrate AWS service features directly into an application. So it provides programmatic access for AWS resources. So that's the correct answer. Option A is the correct answer for question number 114. Question number 115, using AWS identity and access management to grant access only to resources needed to perform a task is a concept known as, it's a very easy answer. We have done this in past uh, in AWS world or cloud computing world, or in fact, in any operational scenario, you don't want to give any access more than what is necessary. Give access to resources that are needed, give the least privileged access. And that's the answer for this question. You don't give restricted access, as needed access, token access. If you want to manage your AWS infrastructure carefully or your IT infrastructure carefully, you should give least privileged access. Give only what is needed. Do not go above and beyond. That's the answer for this question least privilege access, that's what you need to give in order to make sure that you are managing AWS resources responsibly. Other options, option A, that's incorrect. Option B, as needed access is incorrect and token access is also incorrect. So the correct answer for this particular question is answer C. You must have seen since uh, question number 100, we have picked up pace. I'm assuming if you're watching this episode, you have done episode number 1 to 19 and that has covered most of the concepts. So the questions are going to be new in the future episode, but if the concept is an old one that we have covered in earlier episode, I'm going to uh, pick up the speed. This will also help you to revise um, as many as questions without spending unnecessary time on it. And I believe that was the last question in this episode. That brings us to the end of this episode. I will see you in the next episode of the series soon. If you like the content and want to get notified when I release the next episode of the series, then please subscribe to this channel. This is Exam Tricks and Tips. You're watching the AWS Cloud Practitioner Series. See you in the next episode. Thanks for watching.